The Science of Muscle 15 Things to Know About Packing on Size Think of the stereotypical woman in modern Western society and what type of woman do you think of? A woman with a tiny midsection, pretty skinny and slim all over, toned and fit, and a woman who's got a drop-dead gorgeous physique to go along with her stunning looks. A lot of women hate that gender stereotype, because for many, achieving that look is basically impossible. Well, men have to put up with these stereotypes too, and for dudes out there, it's all about getting big and lean, with a ripped and chiseled physique. Nowadays, more of us than ever before are walking around with muscular, ripped physiques, or are at least working hard in an effort to get one. But we're constantly being bombarded with these images of guys and their ripped physiques. Images that adorn magazine covers with actors and other celebs that are on TV. Most guys want to look like that, look like these celebs, but don't have the foggiest idea how to go about it. For the majority of people wanting to get built, the process of putting things in place to get their comprises of buying a gym membership, throwing around some weights, then going off and sitting in the saddle when things start to hurt. The week was needed to recuperate, and then they're at it again, doing the same useless session. Others feel the need to pump their bodies full of drugs, then train half-ass and expect to blow up, pack on size, and get the result they're looking for. It doesn't work like that. To get big, or to get slow as most gym rats would say, you need to first understand what's going on, the physiology and the mechanisms involved in building muscle. Only then will you be able to approach things the right way, to establish that mind-muscle connection that you always hear bodybuilders harping on about. This article's about the science, physiology, and psychology, behind building muscle and packing on quality muscle mass. 1. Turn your body into an anabolic machine. The sole purpose of doing everything I've mentioned in this article is to turn your body into a muscle building machine, into an anabolic powerhouse where fat's just dripping off you, and muscles are being stimulated, federal and built up around the clock. Anabolism essentially means the growth of cells and the build up of tissues to increase size. It means building muscle, but also burning fat. Getting your body into an anabolic state will enhance your fat burning capabilities too. Training hard, eating correctly, and sleeping will have that effect. But there are a ton of other ways you can't turn your body into an anabolic, fat burning and muscle building machine. Eating certain foods can help stimulate anabolic processes. The cardio you incorporate into your training regime, when the cardio is done, and your hormone levels all have a role in building an anabolic environment. You'll only be able to pack on size if your body is in an anabolic state, so begin doing what you need to do to make it happen. 2. It's a 24-hour a day process. If you're serious about gaining size, I don't mean to deter you from your goal, but it's going to be a hard slog, one hell of a hard and long road ahead. That's because bodybuilding is unlike any other sport. The aim of the game is to build muscle, and that's a 24-hour-a-day process. You need to have everything in place to facilitate muscle growth and to get optimal growth, from the training, the right type of training, to figuring out your diet, eating the right amounts of food and at the right times, and then getting in plenty of sleep on top of that. In all likelihood you won't have the luxury of dedicating your whole day to building muscle. Most of you are probably out and about on a daily basis and work for a living, so doing all of this is understandably going to be a tough process. 3. Genetics Now, don't use this as an excuse to slack and give up on your goal of gaining muscle mass, but the fact is that genetics play a huge part in bodybuilding. Your genetics are what ultimately determines whether you're able to pack a huge amount of size onto your frame, how hard it will be for you, what shape your muscle will be, if your biceps big and bulky or if it has that nice round peak at the top. For example, how much food you need to consume to aid your muscle building goals, genetics play a part in everything. You can't take all the steroids in the world, which of course I'm not condoning or recommending, but a lot, and have everything else, your diet, training, sustained periods in check. But if you don't have the right genetic makeup for building muscle, there's only so far you'll be able to go. That's not to say you won't be able to gain muscle, but how much, the shape of the muscle, etc. All of this is largely determined by genetics. For the psychological side of things. You can achieve anything if you put your mind to it. The power of positivity and positive thinking can get you through any situation and where you need to go. 
Those are basically life sayings that can be used in any situation, but if you're trying to build muscle, it's incredibly important. You've got to truly believe what you're doing is good for muscle growth, and have that positive mindset as you go about your business in the gym. The positive state of mind is also incredibly important when you're actually lifting. It could be the difference between quitting when it starts to hurt, and powering through, getting in those few extra repetitions, doing a few more sets, and completing your training routine. Having a good mental state of mind is also important for establishing that mind-muscle connection, which is integral for making muscles grow. What I mean by that is well, I've got to take it back to Arnold Schwarzenegger again. He once said he could go in the gym, do one set of one exercise of one body part, and that minute or so he spent in the gym would be more productive than most people's hour or two hour long workout. Why? Because he had the mind-muscle connection. He would put everything on the muscle and truly believed it would grow. And I firmly believe that, and you need to achieve that too if your goal is packing a muscle and being productive with your workouts. 5. Resting and Recuperating Contrary to popular belief, when you're pounding away at the iron, you're doing things that are priming your muscles for growth. Your muscles aren't actually growing at that stage. Muscles grow outside the gym. Hence you can appreciate why training's only a small part of the muscle building process. The optimal time for growth is immediately after your training session, and during the night when you achieve REM rapid eye movement sleep. This is why resting and recuperating are incredibly important. If you've had a hard gym session and have gotten all the necessary nutrients into your system to fuel the muscle and replenish the glycogen, then it's time to get in a good night's sleep and let the growing process take place. When you achieve REM sleep, your body naturally produces more growth hormone, and the microscopic tears in the muscle begin to repair and get built up to a stronger state due to the reinforcement of more fibers. 6. Compounds Movements This is going to sound like I'm contradicting myself, but bear with me SEC. I've just mentioned you want to isolate the muscle you're training as much as possible, not swing the weight, but lifting in a controlled fashion to put tension on the muscle. This holds true for every exercise. But when training certain body parts, you won't have a choice when it comes to working of their muscles. When bicep training for example, it's pretty easy to target the bicep, the bicep alone. But when training big body parts such as chest and shoulders, it's impossible to isolate those body parts completely. Other muscles are going to get involved. But again, do these exercises, such as bench press, deadlifts, squats, in a controlled fashion and they can be serious mass builders. That's because they utilize multiple joints, recruit different muscles, and stimulate the nervous system, all key factors that act as growth stimuli. 7. Muscle building and strength building are two different things. Most people think you've got to lift heavy to get big, go heavy or go home is a common saying. Sure, lifting heavy is great for muscle growth, but only if the weight's being lifting in a controlled manner. Swinging that weight in any only fashion to get it up and make the wreck isn't going to do any good. It's a common problem when weightlifting, because people let their egos get the better of them and just want to lift heavy. If you're swinging the weight, not lifting in a controlled manner, you're recruiting a ton of other muscles, and there's little tension on the muscle you actually want to train. Train smart, not heavy. What I just mentioned there is powerlifting. Powerlifter train for strength and do whatever they need to do to get the weight up, which might include swinging, bouncing weight off the chest, etc. Bodybuilding and building muscle isn't about lifting heavy all the time, it's not about how heavy you can go. It's about making the muscle do the work, not using your momentum and other muscles to get the weight up willy-nilly. So, don't confuse the two, training for muscle and training for strength gains are two different things. 8. Protein is vitally important. Diet is probably the most important thing when it comes to building muscle. Sure, you can't train hard and kill it every day for hours and hours in the gym, but if you don't have your diet sorted out, what you're putting into your body, what you're feeding your muscles with, you aren't going to get the desired results, unless you have nuts that allow you to do so. Five mentioned the importance of carbohydrates in a bodybuilding diet. Carbs are important to fill out the muscle and give you energy to train. But what builds the muscle in the first place? Protein. When you're killing it in the gym, employing the methods of metabolic stress, mechanical tension, and muscle damage, 
you're essentially destroying the muscle, and it needs to heal, build up again to the point where it's bigger, reinforce with more fibers, more tissues, and it's protein that makes this happen.